Welcome back for part two of the Fort Scott munitions ammo test. If you haven't seen part one, go back and check it out. We did accuracy testing for the uh, Fort Scott munitions, 556, 70 grain ammo. Uh, we had good results with that. Uh, so definitely go check that out. Part two is gonna be the 300 blackout. This is a 190 grain uh, projectile, uh, subsonic of course. Uh, for the 300 blackout so we're going to be shooting that at 50 yards today uh, instead of 100 yards uh, the reason being subsonics are typically a more of a close quarters round um, with them being much slower being subsonic uh, it's just not something that you're really gonna you know shoot super far out so we're going to be testing this at 50 yards today we'll be shooting it out of a um, ar pistol a 10 half inch barrel and we'll be shooting suppressed as well um, as it was intended to be once we get done with our ammo test with 300 blackout, we'll head on up. We've got our ballistic gel block that we've been waiting for for a couple months now. Finally got that in and it's ready to be shot up. So we are going to again test the 5.56 and we're gonna see how it performs in the gel block. And then afterwards we are gonna shoot our subsonic ammunition from Fort Scott in the gel block and see how that performs as well. So Fort Scott is known for the TUI or tumble upon impact projectile. Um, this is basically a CNC machined bullet, 100% um, copper, and I'm I've seen good things so far, but I'm curious to see how it performs today out of uh, out of what we have. So uh, without further ado, let's get to shooting. So the first thing you want to do when you shoot 300 blackout is make sure that you're not shooting 5.56 and you know vice versa. Uh, shooting 300 blackout out of a 5.56 barrel will be very dangerous and expensive for you. Um, so we have already confirmed this is 300 blackout. We have our target set up down there. Uh, the target is from Fort Scott Munitions as well. Originally from Battleline Tactical, but it's a great target for uh, shooting groups. You guys have probably seen it in previous videos, but uh, let's get going. I've got an EOTech on this, so let's try to get this shooting done before the battery dies. Alright, so there's five shots down. Uh, we shot five groups on the center target, so we'll do five more shots on the head box, and then we'll go down and the rest of the ammo uh, we'll shoot through our block. There's five more. Let's go take a peek. All right, so we're up here at the target. Uh, we've got two five shot groups. Again, we were only at 50 yards. Uh, so our first one is a little bigger than I would have liked, uh, especially for being 50 yards. Uh, that group's gonna be almost four inches. Uh, so a little larger than I would like. Um, I've never really done a lot of accuracy tests with subsonic 300 blackout. So I wasn't quite sure what to expect on there. Um, our second group, however, uh, is much closer together. So we've got these four shots uh, at about inch and three quarter, and then you've got one. This makes the group about inch and three quarter that direction too. So regardless, this group is gonna be much better. Um, obviously I need to bring my uh, reticle over to the right, but uh, we're gonna go back and I'm gonna make an adjustment on the red dot, and then we are gonna shoot one more group. Um, I'm just shooting off a bag, so um, take it for what it's worth. Um, it's, you know, it's, it could be my shooting. Um, I'm not the best shooter, probably not the worst shooter, um, but this is just a good indication of what um, my capabilities are gonna be with this ammo. So, but we'll go back, uh, we'll bring our reticle over a little bit, uh, and then we'll do one more group and see if we can bring them uh, together just a little bit closer. All right, I can already kind of tell that we are actually in our uh, bullseye area. 
Um, so our adjustment to the right from here looks like it worked, but we're also at 50 yards, um, so I could be seeing this very incorrectly. So let's go down and take a look. So rookie mistake. Uh, I thought I made a good enough adjustment. I did not. I aimed here. Now we've got 10 shots in this group. Um, I can tell you I believe the group is a little smaller than this first one, um, but it's going to be hard to tell without going back and look at footage. Uh, so I'm going to make another adjustment and then we're going to go back for the head box uh, and we're going to try one more group because that's all we have for this. So let's go do it. All right, we've made one more adjustment. Um, we're going to aim back for the head box. Hopefully we can get one more good group. And again, 300 blackout subsonic. We're just shooting this with a single red dot. So by no means is this a sniper. Um, also, we're shooting out of a you know, 10 half inch barrel. Um, but this is just good to see um, you know, for what subsonic 300 blackout is going to do. I think with four or five shot groups, that'll at least give us a good uh, accurate sample size. Um, and like I said, I'm not shooting off a stand, but I am shooting off a bag. It feels stable and the dot is pretty easy to hold still in the picture. So um, we'll just do this final group and uh, we'll see what we get. All right, that is five shots and our fourth group. Uh, that is all we have for accuracy today. So I'm hoping that we get a good group there and we can go from there and shoot up the gel block. So let's go take a look. So we're back up here. Um, this to the left, one, two, three, four, five. That was our second group of the day. So we did bring it over. Um, again, adjustment wasn't enough. And we do have one, two, three, four, and five there. So what is consistent is our group size. So this group right here is almost exactly the same size as this group right here. So um, what that tells me is with this gun at 50 yards with a 10 and a half inch barrel, um, our groups are about one and three quarters to two inches. Um, so it's probably not going to win you any marksman competitions, but typically subsonic ammo uh, is not used for that anyways. So, but this is just a good sample to see what subsonic munition is going to do um, out of a shorter barrel, suppressed, all that good stuff. So um, everything cycled fine, ran smooth, no issues with that. Um, but it looks like this is kind of what we're going to get. Uh, if you guys have any other experience with it, um, let me know in the comments. I, I've never done ammo tests with uh, subsonic 300 blackout before. Um, so if I just suck at shooting, uh, let me know because I'd like to have smaller groups than that. But if also that's just what you get out of a 10 and a half inch barrel of sub munitions, um, then I'll be content. So you guys let me know in the comments. But we are going to move on to the fun stuff. We are going to shoot up a gel block. We're going to see uh, how these bullets react to the gel block. We're going to watch them tumble, hopefully catch uh, some slow-mo on them, uh, and we'll go from there. All right, so first up with our gel block, which we'll go take a look at in a second, we have our, uh, again, Fort Scott. Uh, 190 grain sub munitions tumble pawn impact. Uh, I've got that loaded up So we'll see how it performs in the gel block uh, One thing to note about this gel block uh, if you've seen the last gel block video uh, That was a 10% gel block. This is a 20% gel block um, more geared towards uh, Rifle rounds since I didn't get this one with the intention of testing uh, Handgun nine millimeter or anything like that in it. Uh, I wanted something um, More like this so this is the 20% uh, gel block from Ballistic Dummy Labs that we're using today. Um, so let's go down. Uh, we'll take a look at the gel block uh, and then we'll shoot this at about 25 yards. So here is our gel block. Um, this is a 6x6x16 by 20% six by gel block. Um, we've got a GoPro right here. Uh, it's going to provide some slow-mo. Um, more than anything it's going to capture 
uh, a couple of the frames of it tumbling, things like that. So it's not going to be uh, as cool looking as something like the uh, ballistic high speed stuff, like the 100,000 frames per second. But we are going to get a whopping 240. So uh, that's what we got today. Uh, we'll go back again, 25 yards, 300 block out, um, and we'll send one through here and see what we get. All right, so we're at about 25 yards. Uh, again, 300 blackout. Um, let's see what it does. So this did exactly what Fort Scott says it'll do. So if you look right here in the front, based on our accuracy, I know I was hitting a little left. So I aimed more to the right and it actually hit to the right uh, and in the top. So if you can see on the side here, it goes in, you have that initial uh, cavity there. This is where you get your first tumble and you're going to see a pretty impressive uh, wound cavity there. So it does tumble and it darts through and it looks like it goes through the table so my guess is that round is somewhere around here I'm not sure if we will find it but actually it did not go through the table it looks like it hit the table did not have enough energy to go through the table and then it actually comes out the back right there so the 300 block out dumps all of its energy um, this is a 16 inch block, so within the first 10 inches, dumps all of its energy, tumbles straight down. Um, we'll look for the bolt later. We're gonna film the 5.56 now. Um, but that's interesting to see. Science. Next up, we're gonna be shooting the Fort Scott 5.56 ammunition out of my IWI Tavor X95. Absolutely love this thing. This is a 70 grain projectile, same thing, tumble upon impact, uh, CNC machine, uh, solid copper projectile. Uh, we've got the camera on the left side of the gel block, so we'll try to hit uh, to the left um, so we can get a better view of that round. Now this one, I am fully expecting it to go out the back. This is carrying three times the amount of speed as the submunition. Uh, so let's do it. Um, but here's what we know uh, According to this it came in right here. So we got a good hit there. It's got a much larger uh, Cavity right there. You can see where it tumbles You can see where it tumbles again, and it looks like it came out the side of our block. So there's a uh, There's a cut right there um, Came out the side of the block, and I'm guessing we are not gonna find that round which isn't really gonna matter because these solid copper projectiles they're not changing their shape. Um, if you look in any previous videos, um, I believe we did shoot some Fort Scott munitions and same thing with Underwood. Um, those solid projectiles, they're not changing their shape through these gel blocks. All right, so we're gonna shoot one more of the 300 blackout. Um, again, always make sure you got your 300 blackout and your 556 five, separated. So we've done that. So we've got our 300 blackout. Uh, AR pistol here. We're going to try to get another good shot uh, on the gel block and maybe see if we can catch one. Uh, based on the last one, I'm still expecting it to go out the back of the block, but maybe we'll catch it in the table or something like that. So, one more, fingers crossed. All right, let's go see. Ah, oh, we caught a bullet. That's awesome, look at this. On the side, look at that. So, 
the camera or the video will tell us for sure where our entry point is. Um, do you remember which? You told me to aim somewhere. I thought it was lower. It's the middle one. It's the middle one? Okay. Yeah. Our first shot came up at the top right here and went down. So here, here's our bullet sticking mm -hmm. out there. So we'll be able to actually pull that out. So here's the second indention in the table. So the table was what stopped our bullet. So if that bottom one was the first one, this is our second one. So 300 blackout is coming in and tumbling down um, both times that we've done it. So it tumbles down and then you can see in the table, I moved the block a little bit, but it hits the table right here. Now the first one had enough energy that it still popped out the back, but this one stopped right there. So that means we get to pull a round out. Now, like I mentioned earlier, these bullets are not going to change their shape. Um, they are CNC machined, full copper. So they're not lead projectiles that are basically coated. These are, that's my surgeon work right there. So this is a, this is our bullet right here. So absolutely zero change in shape. Um, I could probably load this back up and shoot it again if I wanted, so. That's pretty cool. That's what I was hoping for. I wasn't very confident we were going to catch one, uh, but based on the slower speeds of subsonic ammo and the denser block, I was hopeful and it, uh, it delivered. So awesome for us. But I'm throwing in some hearing protection. Uh, this right here is my Ruger Precision Rifle chambered in 300 Win Mag. Um, I was going to scoot back for this, uh, but we are still going to shoot at 25 yards. Um, we are going to be shooting a 180 grain Hornady SST. Uh, this was hand loaded, um, so I can't tell you the recipe for it. Um, but I have a feeling our block is not going to be alive much longer. So this is just, I've never shot a gel block with 300 wood mag. I've always wanted to, and I finally drug this thing out here, so we have to do it. So, hearing protection is a good thing. Uh, use it, and let's send this thing home. This is going to be an awkward shot here. We got to change all sorts of stuff here. All right, are you ready? Mm-hmm. All right, here we go. All right. The block is still there. Um, let's go see what it did. All right, so it dumped a lot of energy into this. Let's see if we can put this. There's a bullet in there. Okay, so we've basically, it's split open on the bottom. It dumped energy pretty much everywhere, which I'm honestly surprised this block is still here. This is, yeah, yeah, it's on the inside, it is very much just absolutely shredded. Um, but with this, it's moving so fast. There's the red piece. So actually, we do have a piece of a bullet in there, or part of the jacket. Let's try to see the best way to get that out. This, like, this direction, the front. Oh, you know what, that... Yeah, we're gonna have to just do some surgery on this. See if we can get her on out of there. All right, we're gonna have to just... All right, 
right, so... I mean, that is definitely the 300 wind mag. We'll have to look at the video, but regardless, there's pieces of jacket all over this thing, so... I don't know. It looks like it definitely went in right here. Because right here, there's a big big opening there. I would be... The red piece is right here, red tip. Yeah. Um, we could shoot it one more time from this side um, and delete it. Might as well, we've got it here, so um, my hands are sticky. Um, this one, I believe, is either 190, I think it's 190 grain um, hollow point boat tail, and we are going to shoot this one and hopefully delete our block. So I am a little surprised that it didn't completely blow up the block with the last one, but uh, I assume this one will. So let's uh, let's see. Got sweat in my eye. Uh, that was different. I think our table's broke. <laughs> All right, table is confirmed broken. Let's see, get our camera here. All right, camera's still good. It took a hit to the top. Um, yeah, this isn't gonna stand up ever again. It was kind of hard and rusting through. We could just put it lower. <laughs> Hey. Oh, I didn't realize the other side broke too. All, All right. right. The table is not doing good, but honestly, the block is still holding on. No, I don't know where the where other piece it. went. Yeah, where did the Oh, it's over there. <laughs> but to be fair, that was already like basically fallen off so I don't know I feel like we I feel like we might be yeah there's pieces of uh, copper jacket it's hard to see with all the rocks uh, this block is definitely destroyed but you can tell a big difference between the 20% and the 10% block yeah it definitely is held together a lot better yeah so actually there's yeah there's that one actually looks like it full on, like the bullet actually blew up. So, um, it's interesting. I don't know that we necessarily learned anything from shooting 300 wind mag into this block, um, but it was still fun. So, um, that's about all we got for you for this gel block test. Um, that's the end of the gel block, the end of my table, and it's the end of this video. See ya.